I remember everything, you know, waking up, um, waving goodbye to my father as he drove off in his motorbike to go to work. I remember, you know, walking hand in hand with my mother along, along Wimbledon Common, with Molly running around close to us, yeah. yes. And then as we ventured deeper into, you know, into the trees, mm -hmm. there was a section that was covered by trees. So all of a sudden we both sensed that there was something in the air. So we both turned our heads to the right quickly and, that, and all of a sudden we saw this man lunging forward with a black bag over his shoulder. And then, you know, everything just happened. You know, in a matter of seconds, I was grabbed, thrown to the floor, my face dragged across the mud. And, you know, seconds later, my mother collapsed next to me. And then I saw him disappear as I was lifting myself up from the floor still, because it all happened so quickly. Then he just disappeared into the distance, like it was a ghost, you know, disappearing. And I stood over my mother and I said, Mommy, please get up. So she didn't move. So I was thinking, why doesn't she move? Why doesn't she respond? And then I said it again, Mommy, please get up. And then it hit me, you know, right at that moment. Uh, I understood, I made that connection that she was gone and she was never coming back. So my heart was completely broken, you know. You feel that very physically in your heart. So what kind of person was your mother? For me, more than anything that she, you know, anything that we might have done together, what she looked like, what she smelled like, any of these things is the feeling of being loved and of loving in return. That's something that will always be with me. And regardless of me losing her in, under these circumstances at such a young age, I've always felt so privileged compared to so many others who have never had that experience of of being loved and of loving in return. How did your father um, explain your mother's death to you? So the fact that I was there, I'd already understood it all in my mind. There wasn't much for my father to say, but even so, when he came to collect me at the hospital, you know, as he had me in his arms, he said, your mother is gone and, and she's never coming back, but, uh, but we're gonna continue on together, you know. One of the most intense moments when you went to the common. Right. Supposedly privately. Yes. With your father. And by this stage, the press were after you. Yes. All the reporters that were on the, the other side of the fence realized who we were. So they all came jumping over the fence. My father had to cover my face with a baseball cap and try to run off as we were jostled, you know, from both sides. And the detectives tried to stop them from coming. And when we actually reached the spot, he put me on the, on the ground and we left the, the rows on the spot. And for, five, for several minutes I stood watching my father as he was crying, you know, filled with tears. Meanwhile, my eyes were dry and I was just standing there, you know, observing him. Why do you think the press was so desperate to get to you? The archetype of a, of a young child with his mother and, and and his, him being there while his mother was attacked and witnessing all of that, I think there were so many elements that people identified themselves with that, you know, everyone was moved by the story. So the story blew up so much that, you know, the press is a business. We like to think that the press is, is some kind of news service, but the press is a private-run business with their own agenda. So that was what serve them as far as selling newspapers. So then your father out the blue gets a call to say that they have another suspect. Yes. Robert Knapper. You and me would think that it's hard enough to get away with one serious crime, yet this person got away with over a hundred attacks on over 80 women before he was finally apprehended. Had they been efficient before, your mother would not be dead, and I wonder what you feel about the police behavior. What I feel about the police is everyone is going to make mistakes. You know, that's, that's an accepted fact. That's, that's just nature. But when you have a system 
where people aren't obliged to be accountable to take responsibility for their actions, that's when you create dark corridors and you attract a certain person to that position which is more prone to incompetence, more prone to corruption. Because now what we have is the, the principle that because the police are well-intentioned, they shouldn't be held accountable. In the book, you've made it clear that you forgive Robert Knapper. Yes. Once you've been through a difficult situation, it makes no sense to keep feeling pain, feeling discomfort every time you think about that event. So without condoning that person's action, that person's behavior, you forgive that person for yourself so you can let go of that negative baggage of the, 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 that you accumulate on your journey through life that doesn't serve you in any way. Would you think, do you think she would think that you'd turned out well? I know that she knows that I've turned out well. Alex Hanscom, thank you very much indeed.